There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome to one of the past HC exam questions on the nuclear chemistry chapter. In this video, I'll go over the actual question itself in a second, and then give you about five seconds to attempt to pause the video. Once you've paused the video, you should attempt the question itself, and when you're ready, then you just play the video. I'll go over the answer itself. So I'll read the actual question. It says, describe how commercially radioisotopes are produced and how transuranic elements are produced. And it's worth four marks. So I'll give you a quick break to pause the video and then attempt the question itself. Right, I am back. So when it comes to answering these kind of questions, because the verb itself is describe, you need to describe the process involved. So it's always good to, in this case, mention um, where this occurs, so where these are produced, how they're produced. If possible, you should also give an example. So example of maybe one of the radioisotopes and how that gets produced. And to get to be guaranteed full marks, it's always good to include equations as well. So this is what I'll go over in this video, and that should give you the four marks most definitely. So first part I wrote, so because I started the commercial radioisotopes. Commercial radioisotopes can be produced through nuclear reactors or particle accelerators. So this was the um, where part. I've explained that they are produced in both nuclear reactors and particle accelerators. So again, this is already most likely going to give you a mark because you've explained where they get produced. Then I give the example. So nuclear fission can split the nuclei of a bigger atom into many smaller commercially important radioisotopes. So again, the word nuclear fission, that refers to as how it's produced. So nuclear fission is the process, and that process results in the, the splitting of a larger, bigger atom into many smaller commercially important radioisotopes. As this is kind of just the how it happens. And I haven't given an example yet, but I'll do that right here. This is the example part. And it's the example and the equation both in one. So uranium, which is 238 uranium, is bombarded by a neutron. That neutron gets absorbed and makes it into from 238 uranium into 239 uranium. And once it's 239 uranium, it will decay and produce these two radioisotopes, 144 barium and 89 krypton. So this is just one example. It doesn't have to mean that you need to know this example. It just means that it would be good to know one example or two examples for this kind of question to get your full marks because equations are always really good to give. Next, I just gave another example of how a commercial radioisotope can, can be produced. Neutron bombardment within a nuclear reactor can also create commercially significant radioisotopes such as Tachnetium-99. And here, Tachnetium-99 is the example. And I mentioned the how as well, so neutron bombardment was the how. And where was the nuclear reactor? So I made sure I had all that in my short sentence. Um, now I also gave an equation as well. Just it doesn't have you don't have to have that many for that kind of question. It's only for four marks. But it's just really good to have some of the equations, especially for these kind of questions which which require them. So here we have Mobidium, which is the example of how we produce technetium. Mobidium, and we have neutron bombardment, which was the process that turns it from mobidium 98 into mobidium 99. And that will decay through beta decay into technetium 99. And then we've produced our technetium 99. So again, like this is actually, I mean, this is, uh, equation so it saves you some time writing as well because you've just described maybe two sentences worth in just one quick equation. But here we've again, we've given the example and we've given the equation. And that was how commercial radioisotopes are produced. And now I'll quickly go over how transuranic ones are produced. The transuranic elements are elements with an atomic number greater than uranium. So this first part was just a quick summary or a quick definition of what a transuranic element was. And they can be produced in both nuclear reactors and particle accelerators. So again, these the nuclear reactor and the particle accelerator that was the where it's produced, the where part. And now I'm going to go into how as well. So the transuranic elements, an example, the transuranic elements, ranknium, atomic number of um, 111. So this was the example. Always good to give examples. 
can be produced in a particle accelerator. So this is where it can be produced by accelerating a nickel into uh, by accelerating a nickel ion to near the speed of light and making it collide with the bismuth target. And this was how it happens. This is the process itself. And then I go through the equation. So here's nickel, and nickel 64 is bombarded into the target bismuth, 209. And when they combine, you have your rhenium 111, so that is a transuranic element, because that's the number of greater than 92. And also we produce as a byproduct a neutron. So for your marks, you get marks for um, mentioning where things are produced, that's important. You definitely get marks for going through the process itself, so you get mark here, here, um, you get marks again because you've gone through how transuranic elements are produced here and given the example of a process. And these um, equations, whilst they might, for a four mark question, they might not be giving you marks by itself, but overall they definitely give you a good um, appreciation of the whole topic and the marker will know that you understand the topic itself. So if you were on the borderline of getting maybe three or four marks, if you have equations in there, you definitely get the full marks. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.